Recent auction results, we've seen this print achieve £16,000. Nice to meet you. All right. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. The heated negotiations begin, but eventually, Rick can get the art for himself. £500,000. We are a bit far. Tell you what, I'll give you £600,000. Hey, what do we got here? A whole lot of silver. The old man is crazy about silver. He's going to be like a kid on Christmas morning when he sees this. The Secret Service ID for J. Howard McGrath. Some letters signed to him by Hubert Humphrey, J. Edgar Hoover, White House Pass, and half of a $10 bill. I've been collecting bikes 20 years, and I want to collect something that nobody has. Murray has been producing bikes since the 1930s. They are pretty expensive, became known by their competitors as the ones to follow. How much are you looking to get? And 6,000 for and 2,000 for. Only 12 known to exist. This should be number 13. I have a book expert who can look at it. What do we have here? First edition, For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway, and a framed autograph of Ernest Hemingway. Here, Pony Express Bible. Where did you get this? I got a friend of mine that cleans up after estate sales, box old books, and this was in it. They charge by the ounce, and you could basically get mail from Missouri to California in 10 days, yeah. which was just astronomical speed back then. Rick is suspicious of the item being fake. Have you done any research on this? Or? I have. Museum of Biblical Art had an exhibit where it featured one of these. It was one of the original Pony Express Bibles. But then I talked to a guy that told me a different story. So I didn't know what to believe. So legendary and iconic, the majority of the items out there are all fake. I doubt if they carried it with them. I do know that the guy who owned the Pony Express was a really, really religious guy. Yeah. So the handing out of Bibles probably did happen. Okay. Rick decides to call a book expert to the shop to authenticate whether the Bible is a rare find or not. I am looking to sell it. Take five grand for it. It's in really bad shape. I don't know if it would be best to rebuy this or not. Only 12 known to exist. This should be number 13. I have a book expert who can look at it. The 12 known that you're thinking that's a 1960 census. Uh, there have been a few discovered since then that they're not super rare. You have these uh, three founders of the Pony Express. You have Russell Majors and Waddle. And Majors is the guy who's really, really devout Christian. And he's the one who insists that all of his Pony Express riders take an oath. They're told they can't swear, they can't drink, they have to deal honestly with their fellow men be a lot of self-control to be a Pony Express rider. And as a result, there are a few of these Bibles that survive because Majors actually worked with the American Biblical Society and he received 300 Bibles from them. This description on the front of the cover, all of the Pony Express 300 had a presentation on the cover. And this one specifically mentions the Overland Mail Company. An inscription gilt on the cover, it says, presented by Russell Majors and Waddle, which are the founders of Pony Express, 1858. The Bible is proven to be inauthentic, but the expert puts a price tag on it anyway, since it is rare. It is definitely not official Pony Express Bible. It would go exponentially more than this. At least double, definitely into the five figures, big deal, all right? Overland Mail was a slower, slightly different complimentary company. Still put the value about uh, six to $7,000. You're the best. Yep. What do you realistically want for it? I really want five grand for it. I'm not gonna do five grand. 2,500. You give me four grand for it then. No. My best is 3,000. I won't go a penny more. You won't go 35. <laughs> nope. I'll go $3,000. All right, you got a deal. All right. The man tells Rick this is S1961 Fender Stratocaster. Oh, this is your guitar? Yes. Okay. It's a 1961 Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> Rick calls it a wow factor. That's a big wow factor right there. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is, yeah. He asks the man where he got it from, and the man replies by telling him the guitar had been with him for years. So where did you get this thing? This guitar's been with me for years. So were you like a studio mus I musician? I was, I was, from 1958 till about 1983. The owner brought out a list of songs he played on it. Did you play with any rock bands and stuff too? I, I did, well, I mean, I was part of the of Herman's Hermits. I have a partial list of the the records that I played on actually played the James Bond theme. You you played the James Bond theme? Yes. So how much are you looking to get out of it? $70,000. Rick tells him he wanted to call an expert to come check this guitar out. 
I'm going to call someone up who knows everything about a guitar, knows everything in the world about music. I'm just basically going to ask him, is, does your name make it worth that much? Oh, I see. Okay? Sure, right no back. problem. No problem. You've heard this guitar probably more times than you even realize. So I basically need to know, this being his guitar, obviously a very influential guy in the music industry. So what do you think it's worth? You know, a really good condition, probably be about a $35,000, let alone with the pedigree of this guitar. I could see this going to a collector at auction, easily sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. This is cool. This is like beyond cool. You know this guy? Yeah. This is the guy that Jimmy Page would look over his shoulder in the studio and like figure out what he was doing doing so he could uh, that right, yeah. honor to meet you honor well, to meet you thank you Jesse you helped teach Jimmy Page I helped Jimmy Page I, <laughs> I advised him on a couple of things yeah we take 50 grand for it maybe 65 you're sort of a rock star do you go 60 I will go $55,000 I, I think that's a fair price I take all the risks all right deal yeah okay let's go do some paperwork this woman brought in a spectacular item a vanishing bird cage what is that this is a blackstone vanishing bird cage by harry blackstone rick sees this as cool and talks about henry blackstone the owner also added that she was married to henry blackstone's son really really cool he was literally in a league with harry houdini mm -hmm. and where did you get it i was married to harry blackstone jr i was the one who was shot in a cannon <laughs> cut in half of the buzz saw that's what i did <laughs> rick and the owner talk about henry Henry Blackstone Jr. Harry Blackstone Jr., the very first big production magician on the strip, right? Yes, also on Broadway, the longest running show on Broadway. The birdcage was featured every show. Is somewhere close to 100 years old. That is really neat. He was in vaudeville. In 1920, the movies didn't even have sound. That's why vaudeville was so big. Rick asked how it worked and if she could make it work, but she couldn't. So how is this like a trick? He would come out holding it, invite anywhere from a half a dozen kids, all put their hands on it. Everyone was holding it, it would vanish. So can you make it work? No. <laughs> You're looking to sell it. How much do you want for it? I'm going to say $3,000. I do have a friend big into collecting magic stuff. If you won't show me how it works. It's so fragile. This is over 100 years old. So what's it worth? You're getting it right from the estate. So the price for this one, $3,500, $4,500. It's <laughs> a cool piece of magic. We'll give you $2,500. $2,750. It's a specialized thing. Will you take $2,600? $2,600. Okay, thanks. Great. Maybe I'll join Murray's magic show. <laughs> Pole axes. How old are these? They're about 500 years old. Where did you get these? The Renaissance Fair? No, I got them in southern Germany. A town called Dinkelsbühl. It's a, it's a walled fortress city, hand forged on an anvil. So they're really light, but they're really strong. The guy would go rolling by on the horse, and you stick that into him and yank him off. A pretty versatile weapon. These axes are in amazing shape. Corey asks for a price and hits up an expert friend to get help. So how much are you looking to get for these halberds? Seventy-five hundred each. I couldn't tell you if they're real or fake. I might have a buddy of mine come down and take a look at them. About five hundred years. What do you know about it? I believe this one's Austrian because of the pattern and also this particular outline. Dots here. The halberds that were made in Austria will have these little vent holes in them. The other one. I believe the other one's Italian. This is more ornate, a little more gaudy, if you will. The expert concludes that one of the items is decorative pieces. Sure, they're from the 1500s. I'm not. The wood on these break and are repaired and replaced. So it's made in the style, but that's not a big deal. Are the heads real? The Victorians were famous for building classic production of older weapons. Steel is really flimsy. You know, you whack somebody wearing armor with this thing, it's liable to bend or break. From the Victorian period, and is what I call the decorator piece. I disagree, but that thing is hand forged and I believe it's original. The other weapon turns out to be real. The owner finds the pricing unfair and gets annoyed. What about this one? It does have a foundry marking on it. The steel is very strong. It's not bendy at all. This is a weapon. This is not something you'd hang on the wall just to look cool. Give me an idea. What do you think they're worth? If you wanted to buy this, I'd pay no more than six or seven hundred dollars. This one, if you want one of these, I can get you one for fifteen hundred dollars. Well, I disagree with you. Good luck finding something of that quality. Hey, Corey. Sometimes he pisses people off, but he never steers me wrong. I'm still interested. Or he tries to negotiate, but no deal is made in the end. Pricing, not correct. Around 1500 bucks. Are you talking a piece? In total. No, I'm not interested at all. All right, appreciate it. Man. All right, thank you. Bye. This man brings in bills from the 90s. They were all laminated as he brought them out to show Rick. 
some of the bills from the 19th century. Rick calls it educational money. What you have here is education money. He also explains that it was made to educate people about works of art. To like fund education or? No, it was just to educate people about beautiful works of art. Rick explains how this money came about and the ideas behind them. It's like one of the few bills where Martha Washington's on it. If you lived in a rural community, you would never get to see art. There were no nearby museums. So they figured, hey, let's put them on money. There's 70 different grades of a piece of paper money. The grade on these things is so important. This is worth anywhere from like $200 to $25,000, depending on the condition of it. An expert comes in to explain what these money were actually and how much they were really worth. These are silver certificates from 1896. And this one is the $1 note. This is history educating youth. History's going to educate us. On the back, George and Martha. The $2 note, we've got science, electricity, and steam. In this one, we've got Civil War heroes, Grant, Sheridan. And I thought this was just a bunch of naked women on a bill. The $1 note, we got a centerfold right here. $700. $2 note's got a horizontal fold. This note's $2,500. This note's got a very light center fold. This note is worth $7,500. Thanks, Leonard. Anytime. Take care, buddy. How much you want for him? Ten grand. Eight grand. Risk I took is just worth more to me than $500. I'll let you make a thousand bucks off me and not a dime more. $8,500 is it, period. I think I'll do that. Good deal, man. The man shows Rick and Chumley a pair of gun crutches. Rick is fascinated by it and calls in Alex, who takes the crutches to the gun range to test them. Uh, I got these crutches here. They're not only crutches, they have like a pistol on them. How much you want for these things. I have no clue. I have a buddy who will know all about this stuff. They look late 18th. So he doesn't know anything about them. He won't admit it, but <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll just start with the pistols. Wow, that is so cool. Yeah. Took the original screws, created brass washers, and drafted them right into like a, it looks like an existing pair of crutches. You would have it here, it would be loaded, and you'd kind of bring it up and fire. So what do you think it's worth? I'm not there with these. I'd really like to test fire them. Let's do it. <laughs> Chumley tests the gun, and they work perfectly, valuing them a whopping $25,000. But will the deal go through? Are there any volunteers for firing? That's why I'm here. You gotta be good at something. Okay, so this one's gonna be ready. That one's ready. All right, you ready, Chum? Oh! Woo! Not bad for a one-legged captain. All right, I think I got her, mate. That's how it's done. What do you think they're worth? 25000 for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave you to it. Hey, Alex. Alex. So what will you take from him? Alex said 25 racks. I want 25 racks. Well, good luck with that. So I'll give you 10 grand. <sighs> Let's go 20. Can we go 20? Give you 13 grand. What about 15? Can we go to 15 at least? I mean, come on, 15. Um, I'll risk it at 15. Yeah. I'm more than happy. Way more than what I was expecting. Beautiful piece of Renaissance art. Open this very carefully. I mean, it's 500 years old. You gotta be careful with stuff like that. Okay. Rick checks it out and asks who created it. All right, so you have a, what appears to be an etching, and you're saying it's 500 years old? Yeah. Who is it done by? Raphael. Rick says that coming in with such a rare item means coming in with a holy grail. So my pawn shop, they say they have a Raphael. Right. It's sort of like walking in here, I have the holy grail. Okay. okay. So where did you get this? Rick asks him where he got this art from. The owner tells him he got it from his wife's family as a wedding gift. Well, my wife and I got it, and uh, her family gave it to us when we got married. So family claims they had it for another 125 years or so. Maybe the greatest painter ever. If you had a large painting by Raphael, you would get $100 million. Yeah. Yeah. On the side, it would be doing small drawings like this. Basically, the printing company would hand him a piece of copper, and there would be a sheet of wax over it. I'd like to sell it. Okay, so how much were you looking to get out of it? I was looking for $95,000. Obviously, it is a print. Right. What I'd like to do, and, and Gerard, you might want to too, uh, I want to take a closer look at it uh, with my magnifying glass. Sure. Get a better idea of what type of print it is when it possibly could have been done. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. This paper is maximum 100 to 150 years old. I think it might be a collotype, which yeah. is a photomechanical method of reproducing artwork. The problem with a value on that is that the more the artist is involved in the creation of the print, uh, the higher the value. Obviously, if Raphael himself had done an engraving, we'd be talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what do you think it's worth? In my opinion, it's worth, uh, and uh, I think Brett's gonna agree, between $300 and $400, Rick. It has more value as a collectible than necessarily a fine art piece. <sighs> well, obviously we're not gonna make a deal, but this it's, is, it's the money's not there. Okay. Rick is proud of Chum,
and wants to give him a chance to make this decision. I just killed it on this deal, dude. Deal of the month. And what is that? I bought one of them Spacelander bike things. Yeah, the dude wanted $20,000 for it. Talked him all the way down to 8,700. Whoa, 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 you're not allowed to spend that kind of money. It's a real Spacelander bicycle. Great condition, and it's all original. But it's never been painted, nothing original paint. Original paint, yeah. Keep it up, before long you'll be making more minimum wage. Chum's been doing a great job lately. He bought a Spacelander bike for less than 9,000, and Sometimes those things can go as high as 20,000. So I'm trying to encourage him and I'm gonna give him a bonus. This is a thousand bucks. Dude, thanks. He did great on buying that Space Lander bike. Dude, I'm gonna get a gold grill with this. You might wanna consider something else. Why don't you buy uh, like two shares of Apple or something instead? Or one share of Google. Invest my money, gold teeth. Invest my money, gold teeth. Is way of this man brought in a slideshow poster to sell to the shop. We have a 1905 freak show magician poster from the Great Armai Troop. He explains where he got this poster from to Rick as he showed him. I got it in an estate auction, actually. Rick explains what he knows about this poster. This was a vaudevillian act. A what? A vaudeville act. Basically, this group of people, they would go from theater to theater around the country. Sword swallowing, magic tricks, balancing act. That's the way theaters used to be. This is all stone lithography. Rick tells the owner his concerns about this poster. One thing that concerns me about it. This is one of the most copied posters there is out there. Rick adds that he thinks it is real, but it has some problems as it has a lot of water damage at the side. I think it's real, but it's also got some problems. A lot of water damage right towards the top. By looking at the printer's marks and the age of the paper, I feel pretty confident this poster's legit. They talk about the price. I'll give you 500 bucks. I was looking more along the lines of $1,000. I'll tell you this, I'll do like $600. That's the lowest I'll go. Yeah, I'll go 600 bucks. Viking expert Laird to authenticate this seller's supposedly Viking artifacts. Guy came in with a collection of stuff, Viking origin, really hoping they're legit. So I called my friend Laird to help me out with this collection. This is my Viking friend. <laughs> nice to meet you. Laird examines the artifacts and values each item. This group of items right here, the academics would say it's not Viking. Tribes, the values, very low to negligible. It's, it's a copper alloy. You know, this item is probably worth $50. This item would probably be worth $175. This is certainly not a Viking spear. It's not worth a lot. The bracelet appears to be Viking gold. Quoted the bracelet at over $9,000. I only thought I was going to get a grand out of it. Rick initially offers $150 for the Viking bracelets, but concludes the deal on $200. 150 and pays seven grand for the Viking gold bracelet. These right here, I want to give you 150 bucks for. As of about 400. I'll do 250. 250. <laughs> all right, all right, we got a deal. 250. I was thinking right around 6,000 dollars. Thinking around 8,000 dollars. Plain and simple, I'll give you 7,000. 75. No, 7,000 dollars. We'll have to settle with that, buddy. Okay, all right. 7,200. I'm gone. The man walks and shows Chumley his antique Saxon iron helmet. Chum isn't an expert, so he brings someone to check it out. Uh, just came in to sell my helmet here. How did you get this? So we were at an estate sale. I came across it and uh, that was super cool. It reminded me of a, an old football helmet. Are you a football player or something? Yeah, used to be. I feel like Magneto. Man, this thing is sexy. I I'm by far no expert on these. It looks like the craftsmanship of the time. It just looks really, really cool. I think this is made out of iron. How much are you looking to get? Uh, I want to get 750 for it. I really have no idea. If it's real, it could be worth more than that. I'd like to have my guy come down, test it, see if it's from the period, and maybe we'll be able to make a deal. Bob walks in and uses a special gun to check whether the helmet is real. It turns out it's a real deal and worth around 15 grand. What you've got appears to be an authentic Anglo-Saxon helmet. You just don't find them. Iron doesn't last for 1,500 years. When you find them, they're usually powder. I've got goosebumps. I just don't <laughs> see these. What kind of person would collect something like this? Very desirable. The most important question, what's it worth? A lot. 15,000. $15,000. All right. The negotiations start, but soon conclude with Chumley taking the helmet for 10 grand. Would you be able to take 7,500? Can do 7,500. Start at 15,000? It's one in a million fine. You gotta give me some room in here. Give me a good number that you'd be happy with. Uh, probably 11,000. Still more than I want to pay. 95. $10,000? 10 big one. I'm not gonna let it walk over 500, so for $10,000, you have a dip. It's yours. I'll meet you over at the counter. Rick is in Boston to buy a rare 1652 New England shilling, the holy grail of colonial coins. So I'm here in Boston because I found this person who has a 1652 New England shilling, literally the first coin ever minted in the colonies. You must be Ed. Rick. These were the first coins struck in the colonies. 
In the 1650s, the colonies still considered themselves British subjects. It's pretty amazing it hasn't been clipped. You never see old coins complete like this. Problem was is that eventually there'd be next to no coin left. That's why Sir Isaac Newton invented the reeded edge on a coin. We got NE there for New England, 12 on the back of it. God, it's in great shape. The owner demands 300 grand for his coin. Rick knows that it's a big deal, and he doesn't want to lose it. It's one of the big ones. Then what do you want for this thing? Anywhere between 250000 upwards of $400,000. You didn't give me a starting point. <laughs> so how about $300,000? Rick had a pretty easy negotiation for this coin, and maybe he's feeling lucky today. What about two and a quarter? 250 at 250, I still make some money, so we got a deal. All right. All right. All right, cool. In, Rick. What do we got? I have a John Wilkes Booth wanted poster after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Where did you get this? Well, I bought this from a collector in Illinois. There's only about 30 or 40 of these in existence. There wasn't a lot of posters put out. By the time they started printing posters, he was already caught. The manhunt for John Wilkes Booth is one of the most intense chapters in American history. And original wanted posters are extremely rare and worth a ton of money. John Wilkes Booth shot Abraham Lincoln at Ford's Theater, then jumped down to the stage and escaped. It was just a massive shock to the country. An original John Wilkes Booth wanted poster would be extremely valuable in any condition. When it comes to putting a price on something like this, condition always matters. How much do you want for it? Pristine broadsides go for about 100000 This obviously isn't pristine. If you could give me one third of that, I'd be happy. It does look old. My big problem is I don't know if it's legit. The expert arrives for the appraisal. I happen to have a very good client who owns an original. I brought it with me to do a comparison side by side. This particular type, there's only four known to exist. So what's this one worth? Approximately $80,000. This is one of the best of all existing examples. This is very interesting. The paper is a very old, early paper. Most of them were right about this size because they wanted it to be very, very visible. This would be kind of difficult to read. I think we have an early reproduction. It's not a modern piece at all. So what do you think it's worth? It's probably worth uh, under $100. Rick now wants the original. Let's see how the negotiation ends. Sorry that didn't work out for you. Well, why don't you hang out for a little bit? What do you want for this thing? Are you serious? It would look great on my wall. It's for sale, right? Thought we were just comparing it. How much you want for it? My client would allow me to $180,000. You think you would take 100 grand for it? It's worth more. Maybe 120? That won't work. So what will work right now? $160,000. Write a check. 125. Call up your buddy, see if he'll take it. I can't do that for you. 150 is it. I'll see you next time you're in the store. I had no idea it was going to do that. We just couldn't get there. What do we have here? We got a better price. This man brought in political memorabilia to sell at the shop. He also, in the document he brought, showed Rick J. Howard's McGrath's ID. I have some political memorabilia, the Secret Service ID for J. Howard McGrath, some letters signed to him by Hubert Humphrey, J. Edgar Hoover, White House Pass, and half of a $10 bill signed to him. Corey explained to the owner that he really never got what the Secret Service was for, as everyone who they were exactly. I never got the Secret Service because everybody knows they exist. The owner also added that he got it from Jay's grandson. Where did you get these? I bought them from his grandson. Rick explains what he thinks McGrath did and who he was exactly. McGrath was the attorney general under Truman, late 40s, was a power player in Washington politics. He was the chairman of the Democratic National Committee when Truman ran for president. Truman picking him to be attorney general, you think? <laughs> Rick explains how much misprinted bills were worth more to collectors than counterfeit bills. This right here is... Of a counterfeit $10 bill. They signed it to the Attorney General. You sure it's counterfeit? Just not a bad misprint? Printing and engraving, make a bill, they screw up. Misprint bills can be worth a lot of money to collectors. Rick and Chumley have come across the BMW in which the rapper Tupac was shot. Rick calls Bill to take a look at the car. The car that Tupac was shot in. Death Row record was the lease or Tupac was the one that was riding in it. I think you should really think about this. You call Bill up and maybe get some advice from him. All right, I'm gonna do that right now. This is seriously the only time Chum has took me to school. Bill carefully examines and values the car around a million bucks. Now, these are pictures of cars on the tow truck taking it back to California. Well, she looks a little different. Where, is the, where would the bullet holes be? One up here, top of the driver's door. door handle and then a couple in the back seat. I guess all that's been repaired? Based on the condition it was in and it being uh, part of a crime, looks similar to the wheels that were on it. She's been polished up a little bit, but uh, this is definitely a unique piece. Okay, so my problem is, it's not like you right. had like great celebrity and this is the car he drove in a movie. This was a car a celebrity got shot in. And... You can own a piece of history, actually drive it. Establishing that value is the tough part.
Half a million, a million bucks. The owner demands 1.5 million for the car, but Rick shakes hands and walks away. Well, what do we think? How much you want for the car? I think 1.5 million dollars. Whoa. It's a big number. I've actually already had an offer at 900,000. And you didn't it take it? We did not take it. It's got a lot of cool stuff tied into it. Think you can beat 900, Rick? The best I can figure is it's gonna go between 200,000 or a million dollars in an auction. Uh, I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you very much. How much I'm... Seriously? I can't believe it. Tupac. <laughs> Rick brings in the vi- The man walks in with a ton of silver. Mr. Harrison is fascinated by this amazing collection. Hey, what do we got here? A whole lot of silver. The old man is crazy about silver. He's gonna be like a kid on Christmas morning when he sees this. I've never seen you get up from your desk that quick. I always get up, son. Not generally very Move quick. Hand. 9% silver dimes over here. I got these bars. Most people don't realize until- I've been collecting silver, son, for the past 30 years. Silver and gold is a hedge against hyperinflation. Rick examines the coins to see if there is any modern coin in them, and even weighs them, which turns out to be 3,000 ounces. All right, I just gotta make sure, you know, it's all silver coin. It's really important for me to scan all the edges on these to make sure there's no modern coins in here. Pre-64, all silver, no copper. They look right, it's the right color. Uh, do you mind if I go weigh them just to make sure they weigh the right amount? No problem. We have 3,372 ounces of silver. So what do you wanna do with it? I want to sell it. This one's going to be difficult to buy, and you know why. Might be a chunk inside that's not pure silver. First off, you have to drill deep enough to make sure there's not a lead core. Then you melt down all the filings until they liquefy, and you create a small button, dropping some nitric acid on it and seeing what color it turns. If it's any other metal, it could turn green, blue to gray. Yeah, it's all right. It's fine. <laughs> Time for negotiations. Rick offers around 11 grand for the silver and buys it. 46,000 for the coins, 33,390 for these bars right here. 32.39 times 942 equals $110,901. Well, let's make a deal. That is the deal. You can't go like 115? No. So what's your best price you can give me today? Go 111,000 even. I'll go up 99 bucks. 112. No, 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 there's no money to be made for it. You can do um, 111,000. Or if you want to, you can tote the stuff around and check some more. 111 sounds good to me. All right, steal 111. Bam! That is 18th century onyx diamond authentic spectacles. Sweet. I think Sherlock himself would be rather proud of you. <laughs> so where'd you get these? I bought these about 10 years ago while I was visiting an antique store. Mind if I take a look at them? Absolutely. God, are these platinum? Platinum, onyx, with diamonds in them. Oh, come on. I mean, you really need platinum, sapphire, and diamond reading glasses at night? <laughs> Any idea of what you want for them? $5,000. How's yeah. that? Rick comes in with his analysis. They're uh, probably 1920s. The whole Art Deco style, this was what was popular during the time period. So what do you think they're worth? Seven or eight hundred bucks. Seriously? Yeah. I'm gonna disagree because I've seen similar ones online valued at $5,000 plus. Is that what they want for them or is that what they're selling them for? Oh, that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the seller is taken aback by his price estimation. Give me 850, I'll leave a happy man. Corey isn't happy with Rick's opinion, but still, the seller did not get what he was looking for. What'd my dad say, 800? Yeah. 850, come on. It's a win-win situation, don't you think? I'll give you the 850. Good yeah. Cheers. Right. Thanks. We got uh, five tops 1967 Pete Rose baseball cards here, mint condition. We got five Mona Lisas too. I'm dead, don't I wish. <laughs> Chum checks it and tells him he is a big fan of Pete Rose. I don't really know too much about Pete Rose the baseball player. I'm a fan of Pete Rose the gambler. The owner says he is no longer a collector of this item and hopes it would be worth some money cards and I don't collect any longer. I've got five of these 1967 Pete Rose baseball cards. They're in like mint condition. They've got to be worth some money. Corey talks about Pete Rose and how good he was before he got banned. Baseball players that ever lived. Oh yeah, he is. When he was playing, he was one of the greats. I realize he's been banned, but I just I just still think they're really fabulous, neat cards. They're, they're Pete Rose's. Corey asks the owner what he knows about this card and where they got it from. How'd you come across these, man? I was cleaning out the garage and stumbled across them. What do you know about them? No tears, no marks. You have any idea what these are worth? No, well, I did do a little checking online. They should be worth about 50 bucks a piece, so it's about two and a half. This guy's got five Pete Rose cards. I forgot I'd let you look at them. So what do you want to know about these? If they're real? No. 
How do you, how can you tell that? What do you, what do you mean? Because the colors are all faded. Everything's a blur, even his face. It doesn't look silk screened. Oh, they're printed with an inkjet printer. And the picture looks overexposed. And another suspect thing is all of a sudden you have five of them that are just perfect. I think you're wrong, but all right. I'll get something someplace else for him. Okay, um, thanks, thanks for coming in. Thanks. A customer calls him and sends a unique art piece and asks Rick's expert to check it out. So I had a customer send in the original 1986 cover art for the Beastie Boys album. I just talked to my rock and roll guy. He's saying $5,000 and he wants my art guy, Chad, to check it out. Chad has the same value as Warwick. If I think I even got a chance of getting this. The expert came in to check it and he was amazed. Really, really cool. The 100th greatest album cover. Rick Rubin came up with this concept. He talks about the artist and how he got the idea to create this. I read a Led Zeppelin book and he wanted the Beastie Boys to have a jet of their own. A little kind of a sarcastic bent. He got the artist, graphic artist, World B1, brought him the concept, gave it to him. This is the product. He also added that this was the sketch of the original work and also explained how it was created. This isn't the final product. Progressive sketch leading there. That's why you have the Mylar. They have some of the little notes. This was supposed to directly rip off the Harley Davidson. So what's it worth? Five, seven thousand. This right here is a work in progress. We don't know how many there was. I'd give you a We're gonna be way too far, unfortunately. I, I like it a little more than that. Thanks for letting me take a look at it. You'll get it in a few days. Thank you so much, Rick. Have a good one, man. Bye-bye.